I've never played this before, by the way. So it looks like there's a lot of locked missions. How to play. The goal of the game is to explore the oddities of the Orion Trail and reach the next Galaxy Force Starbase. <laughs> Click and drag the star map. Click on a destination to learn more about it. Oh, by the way, I, I just want to point out, this is the game in uh, 1080 resolution. So, like, the black bars over here, I see them as well. It's not because I haven't stretched the image or, or anything. Um, shows what you'll get as well as the difficulty. Higher threat means higher rewards. You'll draft a captain and three officers. Each person has stats. Okay. When you make a decision, the probability drive will appear. Each stat point converts failures into successes and successes into criticals. Critical failures cannot be removed. Four resources to keep track of. Crew, food, fuel, and hull. Officers can get hurt. Everyone will starve to death. We'll need to wait for help if we run out of fuel, or the ship will blow up if we run out of, um, if we run out of Hall. Where did I find this game? Well, glad you asked. I will continue to answer this because I have it copy-pasted. I found this game in the itch.io bundle for racial justice and equality. Um, cool. Special type of encounter is the away mission. On away missions, you select an officer to lead an away team of up to eight red shirts. The goal is for the leader to survive. I like that the goal is not for everyone to survive. Uh, your away team leader's stats will upgrade failures to critical successes. Each red shirt will fill a slot on the probability drive. Hey, real nosy. Thanks so much for the Twitch Prime. Super appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Cheers. Be careful. Your entire away team is at risk of dying, including the officer. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take it away. The Wilkie May. A sister galaxy to our own, the Wilkie May is nearly identical. Efforts to explore this sector have been put off because it's really annoying to refer to it by name. Alright, pick our captain. Neil Druckmann. Zawasha Singe or Dale Bradshaw. All right, we've got fights, we've got smarts, and we've got middle of the road. What are we feeling? Neil, yeah, you know what? I ha, look at me. We've got to take Neil Druckmann, clearly. A swarthy individual, Captain Druckmann, has visited many worlds and returned to tell the tale each and every time. He attributes it to his motto, Endure and Survive. <laughs> uh, what's your name, Captain? I think Neil Druckmann is great. Okay. Pick our first officer. Haruna Akatsuki? Kyle Glure. Oh. I mean, okay, we have to pick Kyle Glure. I think... <laughs> I think, obviously, I'm required to. Uh, Lieutenant Glore is an operations officer with an impressive amount of dangerous mission experience. Considering such missions terrify him, he normally plays it cool, but occasionally lets out his trademark yelp. <laughs> Great. Our chief engineer. Crud Star Crush. <laughs> Danalog. Or Lake... Kubilius. Defective defector from the notorious Analog Collective, Danalog has provided key intelligence in the war against his backward kin. What is this? Diplomacy. We're not very diplomatic. Um, 
I, I don't think Lake is beta, right? Like, Lake has bravado. Lieutenant Kabilius upholds the Galaxy Force ideals from a simpler time. He's a practical thinker. Yeah, uh, plays it by the book. Once the book closes, he can really cut loose. Okay, we'll take Lake. And finally, our communications officer. Wolfgang Wesker, Harrison Benoit, or Carmina Marin. As a cadet, Lieutenant Marin graduated at the top of her class with advanced training in engagement tactics. Some say she can even beat the Admiral himself at Hollow Fest. Let's get those tactics. Alright, there's our goal. Here we are. Choose our starting resources. I have eight credits. Hey, thanks. Thanks for bringing chill stream vibes to chaotic times. Good luck with the interview. I really appreciate that. Oh, and I, I just want to make this clear as well. The job that I am interviewing for, uh, either later today or perhaps on another day this week, uh, would be part-time. It's just a couple of shifts uh, a week as a bartender. So, um, that would be very fun. Uh, and then also, uh, would not, I, I don't anticipate it because it's only a part-time thing. Uh, I would just help, uh, make money a more consistent and smooth thing and allow me to stream better, uh, not less. So that's the, uh, that's the goal. I'll, I will of course keep everyone updated on, uh, you know, on what's up as, as I learn it myself. Uh, let's... Huh? You must spend all credits. That seems good. Alright. We have a Class B star, a bluish star. It has the blues, or a Class B dwarf. It's out of scanning range. It's impossible to tell. Well then, let's take the B star. Cinecognatus Telepathic Terror Ensign Lenny's eyes roll back and he speaks with a stilted cadence I am Cinecognatus, master of minds Beat me in mental combat or surrender your crew Your view screen flares to life and a grinning lizard man awaits your next move I've got this. How hard can this telepathy thing be, anyway? You haven't done it before, but you've heard about it several times. It's like normal thinking, except thinking at another person. Ha! 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 Neil Druckmann never loses. Cinecognatus raises a clawed hand and focuses intently on you. You don't feel anything, but you go with it. Cinecognatus exhales sharply and admits defeat, teleporting several near crew to your ship. You wonder if telepathy even exists. Dope. Dwarf Star, a red nebula. This could get us more hull. This gets us something random. We can use more hall. A lavish look over. Drat, you've entered fancy space. Hopefully you can pass through without anyone bzz oh, what have we here? A Galaxy Force cruiser? How droll. Prepare to be boarded by the great Rakulot for your extravagance evaluation. Escort Rackalot to my private quarters. A gentleman like Rackalot deserves your finest, the finest your ship has to offer. You insist on bringing him straight to your luxurious captain's chambers. Alone.
Your quarters impress Rack a lot. You have a very discerning taste, Captain. You should consider a courier and fancy space police. I'll leave you with my card. Rackalot's card is printed on a 1,000 square foot plasma stained blast shield. Gain two hull. <gasps> Unwanted upgrades? You're called the medbay to handle an unusual situation. During the last leg of our journey, several crew were turned into cyborgs against their will. This didn't actually improve them, and now they require fuel to function at all. Alright, add fuel to their rations. You're not going to let a few unwanted upgrades get in the way of a happy and productive life. You give the go-ahead to add fuel to these crew's rations so they can continue to function. Your communications officer says that you are being hailed by an unknown vessel floating in deep space. A shady figure appears on the hollow screen offering repairs in exchange for some fuel. I have no fuel. Oh, 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 the probability drive. <laughs> it's an unknowable spinner. Disappointed but understanding, the dealer says you're both lucky to have run out of fuel this close to a station. You agree to tow his ship behind you if he repairs your ship. You each hold up your side of the bargain. <gasps> Tad's diary! While finishing a meal in the cafeteria, you spy a book underneath one of the tables. Upon closer inspection, it appeared to be Tad's private journal. You probably should return it, but Tad is infamous for being kind of a jerk. Read it! You can't believe the stuff Tad writes in here. He acts all tough, but a lot of the stuff he's written reveals a different story. If Tad acts up in the future, you'll be able to knock him down a few pegs. <laughs> You're being attacked by an unknown assailant. The warp drive is down, helm controls aren't responding, and they're ignoring any attempt of communication. Your gunner cheerfully reports your weapons all work. What's the call? Send a boarding party. Take him out. You nod to your chief of security, who assembles the boarding party. Once ready, they board a shuttle and prepare to make a dangerous flight over to the attacking ship. Get in there, Druckman. Goddamn right. Ugh. Will the game allow me to fail? I don't know. After a few close calls, the shuttle docks with your attacker. You hear shouts over the team's communicators. Phaser fire, then... Victory. There were minor casualties, but the team managed to secure some crates of stolen Nutra paste. Nice. I was, I was pretty correct in, in thinking how this game would be. This is... The tone is pretty perfect. Not him again. You've been boarded! Oh, great. It's the inebriated galactic mooch, the Kapalka. Hey, Captain. Let's get this... Let's get this party starting. I'm super hungry. What's for dinner? Oh, wait, wait. Let's go to Kepler Burger and... Uh... Uh... <laughs> Hey, the Kapalka got my invite. <laughs> Wait, you invited the Kapalka? You actually like this guy? He's an obnoxious mooch who just never shuts up about the dumbest stuff. You're on your own, Captain. He, he's just... Ugh. It's been a while, Captain. Hey, let's raid your fridge and build a death ray. 
the two of you set off on your immature adventure. Hours later, you succeed? That's not possible. I guess you got lucky, Captain. Wow. Nothing a little bravado can't fix. You encounter two inactive repair droids floating in space. You bring them aboard. Upon activating them, you discover they are ready to repair and reinforce your hull. However, with a few tweaks, you can turn them into general purpose droids. I think our hull's pretty good. Let's get some new friends. A modification here, a flip switch there, and done. Your chief engineer has successfully modified the two droids to be as intelligent as the average crew member, and you hand each automaton a shiny new red uniform. Your transporter engineer calls you over, concerned. The transporter has activated on its own, displaying seemingly random coordinates. The engineer is convinced it's a virus, but you know a call to adventure when you see one. Send a team in? Oh, the away team leader? Kyle Glore! <laughs> Kyle Glore grits their teeth, ready to face whatever random danger you're sending them to. Uh, are, are you sure about this, Cap? The transporter engineer says, looking warily at the display. These readings are really strange. Send them out! Kyle Glore isn't going to get off that easily. It's time for adventure, dammit. You nod to the engineer who sighs. The transporter fires up, atomizing the away team. And then, you lose all contact with them. Kyle Glor stumbles forward, feeling disoriented. They've been dropped right back in the transporter room. The transporter engineer looks surprised to see them. Oh, I didn't know you were out, she grumbles. What? Get some food before trying again. Kyle Glor contacts the captain to say they are feeling hungry after that transport attempt, and they are heading towards the cafeteria to eat. The captain doesn't respond, but the away team is too hungry to care. Hey, Krillin. How's it going? Good to see you. What is that icon? FFZ supporter. Nice. Looks like a cowboy hat. Kyle Glor's team wanders around for a while, but when they reach where the cafeteria is supposed to be, they are greeted instead with a wall. They stare at it a while, just in case the cafeteria is hiding. Nope. Not there. Enter the nearest room. Surely the cafeteria is somewhere nearby. Kyle Glor must have just gotten a little disoriented post-transport. The away team locates the nearest door and confidently strolls through it. Uh oh It's the ship's swimming pool. An unusually aggressive swim team challenges the away team to a race. A few of your more competitive crew agree and are quickly swum into oblivion. Investigation verifies this isn't your ship, the Indestructible 2, but the Invulnerable 2. A Force Galactic ship from a mirror universe where everyone has red eyes. The away team huddles up and plans their next move. Take them down. <laughs> um. Oh, that's tough. Let's take them down. Parallel universes are never good news. That's basic science. Kyle Glor commands their team to skip straight to overthrowing the probably corrupt mirror captain. If Kyle Glor is going to stop the Mirror Captain, or Nega Captain, or whatever, they're going to need to make their way to the bridge. That's a lot of ground to cover. How should they make their approach? Act like we own the place. Everyone knows if you strut towards your destination with enough swagger, no one will dare question whether you belong. Kyle Glor decides to take advantage of this universal truth. Oh, it's a 50-50. Whew. 
Everyone on the away team exudes confidence. Everyone that is, except Ethan Coffey. Wait, we have an Ethan Coffey on our away team? Oh no. He comes down with a case of nervous hiccups and is hauled off by a guard. Oh, that's tragic. We're doomed now. They took our coffee. Finally, the away team's efforts are rewarded. They stand now at the entrance of the bridge, the den of the bizarro captain. Kyle Galore hesitates for a moment. This will surely be dangerous. Are they really prepared? Kyle Galore has made it this far. There's no turning back now. Time to see what twisted version of their heroic, handsome, and totally capable captain lurks behind this door. There they are, sitting smugly in the Invulnerable 2's captain chair. The Nega Captain Kyle Glore is incensed. Er, the Nega Captain Kyle Glore is incensed. How dare they wear that beautiful face? It's time to end whatever evil schemes this mirror universe has. Kill them dead. Simple solutions are often the best ones. Kyle Glore sets their phaser to the most deadly of the deadly settings and points it right between the Nega Captain's red eyes. The Nega Captain shoots, but Saxcat heroically throws themselves in front of the beam and creates the opening needed to take the Nega Captain out. With their last spiteful breath, the Captain hits the self-destruct button. The ship is coming apart and time is running out. Should Kyle Glore give the Invulnerable 2's crew a second chance as part of a galaxy force? Or should they take the Force Galactic's resources, you know, to use them for good? Take their stuff! Some Force Galactic crew manage to stow away as you transport their resources away, but most are stuck behind, screaming as the Invulnerable 2 breaks apart. Oh well. They were evil, right? Right? Well, that was fun. I'm gonna drink some coffee real quick. In honor of Ethan Coffee. Rest in peace, Ethan. Your sacrifice is not forgotten. Right, and Sax Cat. And, yeah, oh, the heroic Sax Cat. I didn't know how much I cared for them. Can I see my crew, or does it just generate names when we need them? I think it just generates names when I need them, yeah. All right, onward. The Wrath of Kang. You awaken from your daily cryo nap to find that someone has disabled your ship. Suddenly, you are hailed by disgraced ex-Galaxy Force Commander General Evelyn Kang. Greetings, Captain. Going somewhere. I guess it's time for an eating contest. <laughs> General Kang's composure breaks for a nanosecond, but she accepts. How interesting, Captain. I propose we dine on... You cut her off. It's Nutri-Paste or nothing. You're definitely in her head. Let's see how her stomach handles you. Oh! Oh! By Saturn's rings! This lady can eat. You're a fool, Captain. I was raised in the Koba system on Yashi 5, home of the best eaters in the galaxy. Nearly out of food, you end the challenge and escape while she naps. Looks like I'm about to get fucked. I sure did. Fool, we are nearly out of food. And we've lost some bravado. What a disaster. I really do need food. There's a new game fad involving a visor. Everyone seems to be playing and inviting others to play. You could swear you saw something similar on a TV show once. You can't put your finger on it, but something seems off. 
Read the game's reviews on GalaxyNet. I did, I did just totally ignore the food. I, you know, I made that last decision purely on the color of the stars. I didn't even consider the rewards. That's the sort of captain I am. Um, you deserve to learn, you decide, you deserve to learn more about this fur that's been swerping your ship. You and two of your bridge officers sequester yourselves in your ready room, scanning galaxy net for answers. According to the disclaimer on the manufacturer's site, prolonged use of this visor has some nasty long-term effects. A few crew members end up cross-eyed and puking, but Galaxy Force commends your discovery and rewards you with fuel. Alright, food. Which of these is food? Neither. A small blue dwarf star. That's okay, we can, we can go for a while. A scientist in the medical bay tests a new intelligence serum on his dog. The dog now walks on two legs and has become the most intelligent being on the ship. Some people even think the dog would make a better captain. Ruh row. Okay, I just, as a disclaimer, we built our stats a certain way, and, and we need food. So we need one of the random options. And just given... I Just given the way that the stats are, I will just have to put the dog down. Threatened with losing your captaincy to a smarter individual, you order your crew to intervene and neutralize the canine threat. Amazing. After the dog is assassinated, an autopsy reveals a genetic mutation caused by the intelligence serum. Within days, the dog would have gone insane and killed everyone. The Intergalactic Science Foundation thanks you. Goddamn right. Goddamn right. Good thing I did what I did. An outpost of the Peskin Emirates. They're always looking for hull plating. Mecha Measles! There's an outbreak on the ship of Mecha Measles, and one of your officers has become infected. Unlike most diseases, Mecha Measles actually starts off as a computer virus that spreads into the real world. Remember to browse safe, everyone. Uh -huh. You've discovered a Peskin outpost here in the frontier. The fish people are allied with Galaxy Force, so you're certain that they'd be willing to let you stay for a while. Let's chat and trade. The mess hall. Yeah, trade for resources. Come, I, I don't have credits. Oh, they want hall for two credits. So I could give them two hall. Buy plenty of food. With the trade complete, you head back to the mess hall. Let's chat with the shoulders. The sh I hold on. Let's let's what we should what we need to do is finish our copies so we can read. Chat with the shoulders. We need more shoulders. What do you think? More shoulders? I agree. <laughs> you find the elbows are better conversationalist. That's probably true. They never look me in my eyes, though. I think they might be a little, um... I might have some problem reading social cues. Is there a bean in the stream today? I have bad news. I have bad news. 
there was a period of time in the last month where I was a little bit tight on cash. We're good now. We're good now. But um, during that period of time, I ran out of coffee. So I had to get more coffee because I'm addicted. Um, so what I'm trying to say is today's being of the stream is Folgers. It's Folgers Colombian. And God damn, I hate it. It's, I wish, I wish it were a joke, Paper. I wish it were. But I can get, I can get the little, I can go grab the, the container. It's the sad truth. I was gonna do this yesterday, but... Hey, Sauron, good to see you. Cheers, I wish I were cheersing you with something more, uh, appetizing, but thank you, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. So what do I have to dump into Folgers to make it palatable? Really, the secret is to just use about twice as much as you would with any, with like, good coffee. And then it's like dark enough that it, that you, you, it extracts enough flavor from the shitty beans to make like a decent cup of coffee. But it's, it's rough. The Peskin soldiers, not shoulders, welcome you warmly to their table. After sharing a few war stories, they ask if you're interested in training. Sure. The Peskins are renowned for their hand to fin combat, as well as their ability to evade attackers. I want to be as fierce as a fish. The Peskin is willing to spar, providing you give him some resources. Here, have two hull plates. The mess hall seems pretty empty now. The requisition office is still open, though. We should rest. 30 food to heal HP. We can't spare the food. So let's move on. Yes, that's right. No adorable, highly intelligent dogs stand a chance now. Strange things are suddenly happening aboard the ship. Objects are moving by themselves. You hear knocking, church bells, screaming, and laughter that doesn't appear to be coming from anywhere. You might be infested with a space ghost. Let's go ghost hunting. You ain't afraid of no ghost. You send your security team, equipped with plasma rays, to find and neutralize the supernatural threat. I hate when it does that. Your security team encounters the ghost, which turns out to be a playful, friendly little boy ghost. He meant no harm. You assign some crew members to play with the ghost to keep it from mischief. Then they all disappear! Spooky. Yeah, we need we need the food. An alien obelisk. Before you, floating in the darkness of space, is an ancient carved obelisk covered in various alien languages. The carved characters shift and change in front of your eyes. It seems to be made of a very strange material. Study its construction. The obelisk seems to be made of stone, but not. The material rearranges itself through different electric impulses coming from a crystalline core. The experiment to make this discovery destroyed the carved letters, but, you know, science. Reports come in all over the ship about warp weasels raiding people's trash cans. You're not sure how this happened, but you need to fix it. Exterminate. You order the crew to destroy all warp weasels found on the ship to curb the nuisance infestation.
Your security team sets out bait, trapping the warp weasels in an airlock. You suck them out into space, but a few get stuck in the vent fans. Messy, but at least you can still fry up the remains. Lovely. Oh, speaking of Maxwell House and Folgers, uh, I've been starting to... Oh, you know what? I need to check my email, actually, is what I need to do. I uh, am beginning to work on... Uh, a a new like intro video sort of thing rather than the countdown or maybe we'll have like the countdown and then the intro video sort of, sort of deal um, but uh, it involves old no old coffee commercials and Maxwell House has some really good ones. I think this... Yeah, I got it. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. Okay, well, that's actually not great. I'll have to uh, do some stuff. Cy Cyberlink is just the most annoying company to work with. And if, like, Cyberlink Power Director, great program, but oh my god, their customer support. Uh, all right. Let's go here. Tragically, the lead anchor of your ship's closed circuit morning news show, Indestructible 2 Day, has passed away. No news is bad news in this case. <laughs> Your ship is in more warp weasels? Jesus. Use a prototype weasel spray. You arm your security team with hoses filled to bursting with alpine scented weasel spray. Nice. Remarkable. The spray has calmed the warp weasels and given them an impressive set of new properties. These new glowing energy weasels can live freely in the ship's fusion core as docile egg-laying creatures. Green, glowing eggs. Damn, I'm told they taste great with ham. Yeah, exactly. The hot drink song from Wendy's? I... I'm unfamiliar with the hot drink song from Wendy's, but I'm willing to bet that that... Uh... I'm... treading a fine line, I think, uh, with fair use, reusing, uh, clips of old commercials, and I imagine if I ripped a song from one, that I would be, uh, on the... The wrong end of DMCA would be my guess. I don't know enough to, like, remix a song, so. Uh, you awaken with a start. You've been gagged and tied to a chair. The room is dark, and you struggle to see anything. Suddenly, several of your crew burst through the door, and their eyes lock expectantly with yours. <sighs> your medical team rushes into the room and operates with swift efficiency to release you. Shit. Now you remember. You wanted to see how your crew would operate if you were missing. It turns out they wandered around open space for several days. You should probably look into some kind of emergency training. The next outpost. That was pretty easy. 
Congratulations, Neil Druckmann. You have successfully traversed the Wilkie May in the most daring expedition. Galaxy Force honors you with the title Admiral... Oh my god. Admirable Rule Breaker. Candy Applebottom, Stogweiss, Templeton Sledmere, Ethan Coffey, Sax Cat, Harrison Bennett, Dog, Doug Krause, Lily Freeze. Very sorry to see you go. Overall, that went pretty well. It is. It's a delightful little, delightful romp. Yeah, I, I imagine they get harder as you go. Ursa Major, home of the Ursins. It remains mostly uncharted. It'll be a tough task to bear. Bear? No, it's bear. Uh, we could set out again with Neil Druckmann. We could go with Rostin Murphy. Or Adria... Halber. Adria? Adria Halber. Hailing from parts unknown. He wears a pretty sweet hat. We're gonna be Adria Halber. Uh, let's see, the fixer. Yell save nays. Or Gardenia Verdhart. I'm gonna go with the fixer. Galaxy Force's foremost tech officer is a simple country engineer. If it's broke, he'll fix it. He'll make, uh... I don't know what's wrong with me today. I just, like, can't read. Pour another cup of joe here. Oh, also, just, just so you know, um, so some of you might know that, yo, Dark Rising, I'll be right back. Is it 19 months already? Hi. Time flies, huh? Hey, Dark Rising, thanks so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks for being, thanks for being here. Thanks for everything. Uh, I hope you're doing well, really. Stay safe out there. Um, so, I've been talking recently about an upcoming Deets and Watson, Deets Nuts stream. This is not that stream. That stream will be tomorrow. Um, but, um, their new product, Deets Nuts, uh, I had thought, I guess because I'm bad at reading, as we found, uh, I thought they would be nuts, you know? Uh, they're not. They showed up yesterday. Deets Nuts are meat bites. They're like little... You can see them in the back there. They're little, like, sections of, uh... Of different kinds of, like, meat. Like little meat nuggets. They probably don't want me to call them nuggets, because they call them bites. They're little bites of meat. Um, I have, I have already opened and eaten a bag. They're pretty good. Not gonna lie. But, um, yeah, so the, the officially sponsored Deets Nuts stream will be tomorrow. Uh, let's do the fixer. Yeah, here we go. Pick your chief engineer.
Well, obviously it's Colonel Bananas. The ridiculous result of a brain-enhancing test serum, Colonel Bananas has since enlisted in Galaxy Force to put his intellect to good use. His plans are unconventional, but nearly always succeed. None of these are aligning with my stats. Joni Bubbly Rich. Personnel officer Lieutenant Rich is considered by many to be Galaxy Force's best chance at a good first impression in matters of diplomacy. Her crewmates call her Bubbly due to her limitless optimism. Hey, fool of a thoot. Hope you're having a good day. Oh my god. This one's much bigger. I am. I am having a good day so far, fool. Thank you. And uh, th thanks also for the support in the sub. means a lot. Hope you're doing well. Okay, Hall did not seem super important. I think we do it like that. And then... Nothing is too threat yet. Let's just start out getting some fuel. A perfectly paired paradox. A version of yourself in a fancy vest appears on the bridge. Future you claims to know where a hidden cache of fuel is on a nearby planet. Suddenly, a second version of yourself covered in leeches appears and begs you not to listen to the first you. Capture and study both me's. The security team escorts both alternate U's down into the science lab. Shit. After a few high energy experiments, you open a rift in time and pass out. <laughs> As you regain consciousness, you discover you have been deposited in an alternate reality. Nothing is different, except everyone has a beard now, even the women. Okay. Okay. The beard beardiverse. I know, I know. I really I was sort of anticipating both of these both of our women officers getting a beard. I That would have been a very nice touch. Um, internal sensors detect an alien presence has suddenly appeared aboard your ship. The alien has given no identification. Er... <laughs> what is happening to me? Uh, did I forget to do something today? No, I think my brain's just not turned on yet. It's the Folgers. <laughs> it is. It, it, it must be. It, it just must be. It's my brain. It's like my brain normally runs on premium and I'm just, I'm putting like regular into it right now. Uh, yeah. Oh shit. My pizza. Holy fuck. Um, yeah. Okay. Tell you what. I'm going to take just a quick second. Gonna throw you onto the onto the be right back screen. Gonna take just a quick second. Gonna go splash some water on my face. Maybe do a couple jumping jacks. See how that goes. I'll be right back. Okay. Also, want to take a quick break. Uh, that helped quite a lot. I feel much more alive. Um. Something. Uh. The the other day. So one of my one of my good dear friends. Um. He recently graduated. Big congrats. If you're out there, uh, you know who you are. Uh, and uh, graduated uh, grad school and is getting a job and is moving away, which is, you know, sad for me. Um, I actually... 
I was not as good a friend as I, I wanted to be. I, I, yeah, you, you know, sometimes I get a little bit hermitish and I, I drop off the map for a while. And I had just, I had done that. Um, and like hadn't hung out with this person for like probably six months. And then I was just starting to be like social again. And then Corona happened. And so at this point, I probably realistically, I think I've seen him twice in the last like nine months, which sucks. Uh, and now he's leaving, but, uh, my, he, his, his was always the house that I played board games at. And so, and I have a ton of board games and his was always the house that we played board games at. So it was just easier for me and for, for all of us to leave the board games at his house. Cause he had plenty of room. He had a bookshelf and no books. So we just put them all on the bookshelf. Uh, well, because he's moving out and, and starting to get stuff packed up. Uh, the other day he delivered uh, all the board games back to me. I have a lot of board games, it turns out. Um, like, a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21... 21 that are visible right now. Nope, 22, 23, and then more in a bag uh, that are all sitting around me. And so uh, I, I think part of what I want to do tomorrow is just like talk about them and show them off and uh, yeah, evangelize a little bit about board games. But there's also one. Uh, it's at the very bottom. I can't dig it out. But there's also one, and, and just let me know if you would be interested in this. Uh, there's a board game that we can play um, collectively as chat and, and, and me. Um, it's a Sherlock Holmes game, and it's literally just solving a mystery. That's the whole thing. It, the game presents you with a mystery, and then you have to choose... Um, like, okay, well, where do we go in London? Who do we talk to? So you'll be like, okay, we need to go. Oh, the person was murdered by the docks. Let's go down to the docks and talk to people there. And then you flip through a little book and it says like, oh, if you're talking to the dock manager, this is what they say. Um, and then you use that information and you start going to all these different places and, and you try to solve the mystery. Uh, it's pretty fun and it, it's like, it's not really a game. It's more like just a mental detective puzzle thing. It's pretty pretty cool. Anyway, so uh, if there's any interest, we might do that. But uh, for now, let us continue. I think, I think we... I feel ready to read the correct words. Um, limit the aliens' movements. You activate the internal shields to seal the ship into sections. Being trapped between two shields enrages the creature. It pounds at the walls, bursting through into the crew locker room. It takes out several crew and many towels before it is finally subdued. Shit. Let's get some crew back. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it, it's a great time. It really makes you feel like you're solving a thing. Um, there's a chance I might need to find some... Cause there, there's one component. Mo most of it is literally just, like, reading and remembering stuff and, like, taking notes, which I can do on stream. But one sort of important thing is there's a newspaper. Each of the mysteries comes with the daily news from London from that day. And there are, like, clues in the newspaper that you have to pay attention to and read. So I might um, might need to find some way of showing that on stream in order to make it work. Uh-oh. High Command notifies you that you're to be court-martialed by Holocall right now. An image of the Admiral's stern face reads the crimes listed against you, which involve mostly property damage and negligence. How do you plead? G 
guilty. You make an impassioned plea for leniency. What can you say? You've made mistakes, sure. But what about your triumphs? The nap you took during the firefight with those slavers left you well rested for the resulting hostage negotiation. <laughs> Shit. Oh boy, High Command had not heard about the incident with the slavers. They want to bring you in for questioning. Command shuts down your refrigeration tanks remotely, spoiling your Nutra paste. The thank the stars for Nutra powder. Well, this is not going well. Freeze-dried beefalo! Before you is an entire floating herd of freeze-dried beefalo, tumbling idly through space. The little guys must have fallen off a Taco Shan cattle ship. You find at least 2,000 pounds of meat, but you're only able to carry 30 pounds back to the ship. Nice. Solid reference. Crisis. A wave of radiation. Huh. A quasar exploded three sectors away. Wow, beautiful. It also created a massive wave of ridiculously deadly radiation, and it's headed your way. The bridge crew looks to you, anxious and expectant. Shields up! You're reasonably confident that your shields can mitigate the harmful effects of the radiation barreling down on you. You give the order as the wave grows larger and larger on your view screen. It takes a lot more effort to maintain the shields than you expected. You divert additional power to all major systems, which causes a few computer consoles to overload. Luckily, most of your crew survives. I need fuel! You land at a sleepy fuel depot for a routine fill-up when suddenly all hell breaks loose. Attention, low lowlifes, this depot has privilege of being raided by the dazzling and dangerous Dazer Beans. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. What do we do? Placate her with yummy treats? You have intelligence on Dazer Beams and know her one weakness. You dash into Mattermart and frantically search for a decadent deterrent. <laughs> Ha! Ah, hooray! You purchase a plasma glazed donut with star sprinkles. This should do the trick. I'll take that! She begins to munch. For this, nom nom, I shall let you live. But tell your Galaxy Force friends that I prefer chocolate. Noted. Ah, an oculoid hive station. But first, a grizzled veteran. You meet a veteran Galaxy Force soldier in a shuttle. Apparently, she's on her way to teach some of the new cadets about offensive and defensive strategies. After some friendly chatting, she's curious about how you approach combat. The best defense is a good defense. The veteran laughs. Interesting way to put it. But I can't argue with logic. Here, I'll show you some ways to outmaneuver your would-be attackers. All of these evasive patterns seem incredibly complicated. Perfect. The Oculoids, a race of squid eyeball creatures, have no beef with Galaxy Force, so you're welcome to stay for a while. Contraband, let's go. You arrive in a poorly lit room. Let's trade for... Do you have anything more exotic? We have some intel. Sensitive data. I've got some pretty detailed data on oculoid physiology, as well as a primer on our culture. I promise you won't get anything as accurate as what we've got. Oculoid physiology sounds fascinating. The oculoid jiggles his eyeball stalks and wants to know what you'll trade. I'll trade 30 food. After more hushed conversations, a convoluted series of contacts, suppliers, and negotiators, the trade is complete. Most of the oculoids have cleared out. Let's trade for resources. Okay. Uh. 
Uh, okay, so we're just like having a real bad go of things here. Uh, what do I need? Well, I need need crew more than I need hall. So this is a cursed run for sure. We come across the tower of Inverial the Astromancer. One hundred humbled heroes are said to be sealed inside. Your staffing budget isn't what it used to be. You could really use those heroes. Maybe the Star Wizard isn't around. Fight magic with science! You shall be the one to prove to Inverial that science, not magic, is the most powerful force in the galaxy. You issue an official challenge and prepare to wield whatever your lab hands you with utmost confidence. Inverial's eyes roll back as he speaks the ancient names of the stars. But you've got a weaponized Tesla coil. You fuel it up, fire, and lock into an energy tug of war. It's a draw. Inverial's prisoners escape during the duel and join you. Oh, good. And food? That's good. I'll take some food. Just add water. You receive a frantic message from the cafeteria. Apparently, someone added water to a giant brick of dehydrated nutripaste and it has begun to grow exponentially. Several crew members are being trapped behind a blob, giant blob of nutripaste. Depend on chemistry. The scientists concur that using a fuel-enhanced chemical flamethrower is the best means of defeating the nutripaste blob. Honey, you shrunk the blob. It's so small that it will take hundreds of years to be dangerous again. You complain to the store where you bought the defective dehydrated nutripaste and they replace the bad batch. Oh, we're still, we're still so low on food. You've encountered a gravestone. Sensors indicate there is some sort of floating memorial nearby. Your navigator asks if you want to make the short detour to check it out. Yeah. Director Adam met his fate by rapid molecular decomposition. That's nice. Turns out that this person was an author. Evidently, from the neatly stacked piles of books, you take a copy of the big book of talking good and learn something. The Admiral hails you, asking for a quick favor. Can you retrieve the Jellyak Ambassador from Nervous 4? Your ship is closest. He understands if you don't have the time. Why wouldn't you have the time? The planet is just right there. Assemble a team. Nice. Uh, let's send... Oh god. Let's send Joni Bubbly Rich. The team is herded into a long customs line. When your team finally reaches the booth and shows their interstellar passports, a stern uniformed hippo clop blinks its eye at Joni Bubbly Rich and booms, Anything to declare? Ask what's illegal. The team can't properly answer the question unless they know what's declarable on this planet. They don't want to get into trouble, after all. <laughs> the Hippoclop hands you a list detailing the things that need to be declared. Red shirts is on the list. Joni Bubbly Rich declares them, but misspeaks and says the wrong number. The remainder is hauled away to quarantine. <laughs> After customs, the team meets with the Jellyak Ambassador. It's awkward. Jellyaks are liquid beings. The Ambassador is a jar of pink liquid with eyeballs floating in it. Creepy. Will you escort the jar to high command, or is this just too weird? Verify that it's the Ambassador. Uh, Ambassador? Uh, Joni begins. Yes, yes, says a voice echoing through the minds of the away team. I get awfully sick of this. Yes, I'm a liquid ambassador in a jar. Get over it. Oh, I've lost my diplomacy. That's the worst possible thing. The team and the ambassador are ready to go. One problem. 
it's illegal to take more than 100 milliliters of liquid off the planet. Says Ner Nervous Four's Terrorism Suspicious and Suspicion Agency. Oh my god. This throws a bit of a wrench into your mission. We'll just drink the ambassador. In a quick move, Joni drinks the liquid Jellyac ambassador. Now the team can continue unobstructed. Except the Hippoclops have this whole area under video surveillance. So there's that. A burly Hippoclop agent, not the smartest, growls, No liquids! And scans a random crew member. Detecting liquid, the Hippoclop arrests, arrests Nick Potza before your officer could point out that the liquid is probably blood. At the shuttle, the team finds an armed guard of Hippoclops surrounding it. An audit of, your custom, of our customs paperwork finds that you failed to visit the space notary for the proper stamp. Your leave is denied. Demand an appeal. Joni is quickly to demand an appeal. The highest ranking Hippoclop sighs and escorts the team away to the appeals line, which is even longer than the customs line. The away team prepares for their customs appeal. Joni steps up in front of an appeals committee of three angry, angry hippos who will hear and rule on the appeal. Invent a delay and escape. Joni cites a fake article in sub subsection number, declaring that according to customs law, they request a continuance. As the committee pours over the books to find this legislation, the away team sneaks out. In retrospect, it's obvious that there would be armed hippoclop bailiffs outside the door. Oh well, you know what they say about hindsight. The team won its appeal but now must obtain a specific sticker to be affixed to the shuttle, allowing departure from Nervous Force Base. Enough, cries the ambassador telepathically. I invoke trial by combat. Wait, what? Nobody expects a wedgie. Showing real and substantial maturity, Joni whispers to the team that their strategy is to give wedgies to the Hippoclops. <laughs> Joni reaches under the armor of one Hippoclop and yanks its underwear up hard. This only serves to make the Hippoclop fly into a blinding rage. There's so much more. Oh my god. There's absolutely no way we make it. Okay, uh, fuel is good. Mr. Scruffy Bottom's Revenge. Your first officer has abdo adopted a bearded shark rat rescue. You explain that it was the previous owner that was rescued, not the shark rat. Um. <laughs> Crisis, the game. There's a new fad. Every, oh, everyone's wearing a visor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ban the ship. I mean, ban the game. I still can't read. Ban the game. Until you know more, you're not going to trust your... You are going to trust your gut. You put a ship-wide ban in effect. It's not like it's safe to be walking. What is happening in my brain right now that is not allowing me to read words? You were right, Captain. The game is actually a mind control device. A few of your crew's brains are turned to sludge by the time you discover this, but Galaxy Force is glad you found it out and gives you a fuel bonus. Okay. Overclock processor. One of the eggheads down in the science lab has figured out how to improve the ship's quantum processors. Unfortunately, the scientist only had enough components to make one of these newfangled doohickeys, so you'll need to choose what to upgrade. Upgrade our sensors. With this new processor, your sensors will be able to find and identify targets, like, way faster. At least, that's what the scientist is claiming. You press him for details, but he's pretty hand-wavy about it. Oh, the huge manatee. An enormous space manatee looms before the ship. Per the secondary directive, you order the ship to engage the majestic creature for science. Closer. Closer. 
Too close. The manatee lunges, swallowing the ship whole. Ramming speed. Not again. Full impulse ought to knock some sense into and some teeth out of this space beast. I was so ready for failure. Reverse ingestion, full speed. You order a spread of phasers to keep the mouth open, and you exit in a spray of spittle and tooth debris. The ship is pretty slimy, but you're able to scavenge some biomass suitable for grade D rations. Nice. Oh, you receive a message from a nearby mining colony. Chat with the locals. Trade for resources. I can't give up 50 fuel. I think that's it. To the bar. Talk to the bartender. Tell me about the surrounding area. For two hall plates. The bartender shrugs. Yeah, all right, I can sell it for scrap. The bartender gives you valuable tactical data about the region. Yeah, we we haven't lost Hall ever. I mean, we're we're totally fine. Both planets have food. Let's go to this one. Darkness falls across the land. You are hailed by a jerry curled zombie. In a studded red leather jacket. From a nearby moon. The alien raises one sequined glove in greeting. Inviting you to the surface. Take that moonwalk. Away team assemble. The other option was beat it. Just beat it. Alright, let's send the fixer. The yellow-eyed leader, Jackson greets you. The pop zombie's entire society has been built around a single earth transmission from the year 1983. Leather-clad zombies look at you expectantly. What will you do next? Follow his lead. The fixer suggests that this moon deserves a closer look, and you agree. I need, I need Colonel Bananas to stay safe, so I, I can't send him on the away mission. Our whole ship right now is built around tactics. I can't afford to lose Colonel Bananas. As the away team ambles along, Jackson, king of the pop zombies, asks a favor of your crew. Would they act as extras in a soft drink commercial he's filming? There will be cool pyrotechnics and everything. It will be perfectly safe. Do the commercial. During a pyrotechnical malfunction, Jackson and the Fixer are injured on set. The Fixer better appreciates the danger of pyrotechnic displays from now on and attempts to press on. As they explore the moon, your team finds a creepy and abandoned amusement park. It's probably unsafe, but looks oddly inviting. As the team ventures toward it, a menacing horde of abandoned llamas charges from the trees nearby. Use a llama call. The fixer reaches into a shirt pocket to produce a standard issue llama call, engineered by scientists to work in such cases. It should come in handy. Unbelievable. The fixer blares the llama call loudly, hoping to stop the beasts. At that specific decibel level and inflection, it proves to be a llama mating call. Some red shirts are crushed in the confusion. There's a glowing sidewalk. Solve the puzzle. With a few scrapes, your crew dances on the sidewalk until the tiles light up in exactly the right pattern. Jackson hosts a special reception with the traditional beverages only served to those who can get down. It tastes strangely like fuel. Jackson faces the away team and informs the fixer that it is customary for all new arrivals to participate in a dance-off. Download dance programs. The Fixer asks that all dance programs in the ship's computer be downloaded into the team's data pads. This should give your team an edge, right? Oh 
my god. The dance programs on the ship's computer contain malware. When your team follows the instructions, it's a cacophony of swirling limbs. Not only does your team lose the dance-off, but a couple of team them lose their lives. Keep the secret. It's important not to interfere, so the pop zombies should be allowed to exist exactly as they are, without understanding the context. Oh my god, despite differences, both your team and the pop zombies have enjoyed your visit. As you prepare to leave the moon, your new friends throw you a super fun farewell party and send you packing with lots of leftovers. That was... Okay, we lost a bunch of crew. I mean, light speed, it certainly has failed more often. Let's just, let's leave it on fast and see how that goes. I also, there's no reason it should. Operation Innovation. Your manufacturing robot, MK421, has constructed an exact copy of herself. She informs you that she has lots of ideas and wants to make more friends. This makes you a little uneasy. Her green eyes blink at you. <sighs> Build me an army. Eager, your army shall be unfeeling and unstoppable. Cool. Wait, what? Yeah, you're sure it's fine. Just robot talk. You settle and wait for your killing machines. Alright, that checks out. MK builds you a robot army so... Oh. I really didn't think it would lose three. Alas, Adria Halber, your journey has come to an end. Ursa Major is a dangerous place, so do not be discouraged. You have been posthumously awarded the title Incredibly Dead. <sighs> yeah. All seven. I think there was only one failure, so six of those failures were taken on with better than 50-50 odds. Six of these, and one of these, at least, were better than 50-50 odds. That really sucks. That sucks. Incredibly dead. Did we win? Uh, no. I, I, I don't think that we did. 